speaking to the Israelites That's when he right. said God chose you to be a special people above all people on the face of the earth. Now here's the confusion in the earth today. Give me Isaiah 1 and 3. Here's the confusion in the earth today. People don't know who the Israelites are. Bring it out. When you, when you look at TV, when you look at the news, when you go to your uh, theology schools and Christianity, they will teach you that the Israelites are the Jewish over there in Israel. What? But when you read the Bible, the words of God, it says something different. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. Uh -huh. The ox know of his owner, and the ass his master's crib. So you got an ox and a donkey. Those two animals, they know their owner. They know where they come from. They know who owns them, who made them, who put them on this earth. But what? But Israel. But God's chosen people to this day does not know. We don't know that we're the special people on the face of the earth. Read. My people does not consider. And some of us don't even consider it. We were given a nationality by our oppressors in America. That's and we don't even consider that, hey, maybe the God that named me and told me who I am and is also the God that enslaved my forefathers, maybe he's lying to me. We never consider those things. But now it's time to consider that we're the greatest people on the face of the earth. That blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are God's chosen people That's according right. to the scriptures. That is a fact. That's a Bible fact. My brother, come deal with us for a second. Now, as God's chosen people, there are things we have to do. Give me 10 and, 10 and 12. Yeah, take us out since we got a school not too far from here. Your cap got it, cap got it. As God's chosen people, there's a way we're supposed to move once we find out we're the greatest on the face of the earth. Once we find out that our name means a prince with the power of God. That's right. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. Uh huh. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? And now that you know you're an Israelite, now that you know you're God's chosen people, what standards does God hold you to? What rules and regulations does God hold you to? How are we supposed to be on this earth? Read on. But to fear the Lord thy God. Everything starts right there. We're supposed to fear God. Right. Nobody's going to bust a move unless you fear the Most High God. You're not going to do anything. That's you have to fear the Lord. Give me Psalms 111, 10, hold that. You have to fear the Lord first. That's how, that's how you begin to do everything else. Once you know that the Most High God is in control of everything in your life, once you realize that these signs we got here, the oppression and slavery we went through, was a direct result of us disobeying our God, right. you'll get fear so you can obey Him and get right and get in His good graces. Read on. The book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. Uh huh. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Why is the fear of the Lord? The beginning of wisdom. Why should you be fearing God? Why is that the first step to obtaining wisdom? Cause we, hey, come deal with me, bro. Come deal with me, bro. Hey, look, I ain't, you can stay right there. What's what's? The, you can stay right there. You ain't even on the spot. You know what I'm saying? The spot this way. Yeah, I'm gonna deal with it. I deal with the scripture. He said some things in the Bible. He believes some things he does. His translation is so cool. Okay, so so. It's maybe you feel like the Bible's a little wishy-washy. All right, so give me give me one so I can deal with it. Okay, what's what's the what's the wishy-washy part of that? Who said that? Give me Psalms eighty-two and six. Who said that? That's what a, <laughs> we talk, That's why we gotta come out the Bible. Hey, look, that's you weren't here when I first started teaching. The Christian church is the reason we so jacked up right now. That's right. Because they misteach the Bible. They're not teaching the facts. Watch what God says. But, hey, exactly. Divide and conquer. That's a that's a tool utilized by our oppressors to divide us as a people. Read that, Psalms 82 and 6. The book of Psalms, chapter 82 and verse 6. I have said. Who's the I have said? Who's saying that? When it says I have said, who's saying that right there? Who's, who's that supposed to be talking? God. So right there, off bat, God speaking. Read. I have said, ye are God. 
The most high God said we are God. Right. So I don't care what no preacher say. If it goes against the Bible, when he so if God says I'm a God and someone else says you can't say that, that don't have nothing to do with this Bible. Right. You see what I'm saying? Hey sis, sis, come deal with come on around and deal with us. That has nothing to do with this Bible. We that's what we gotta get the truth of the Bible because it's too long. We've been taught lies. And that's where Oh, see, that's a misunderstanding. That's enough. And hey, look, watch this. I'm going I'm to I'm explain something to you. Uh, give me that in 1 Timothy 4. A lot of the uh, the confusion in the Bible, this is what you too, sis. A lot of the confusion in the Bible comes from man bringing it out in their own way. You see what I'm saying? There's no contradictions in the Bible. Right. Simply misunderstandings are unlawful teachings. All right? So watch this. Read. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4 and verse 1. Right now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. So, it's, he, he giving a warning. Some people going to depart from the faith. But jump down to the point. Okay, go ahead. Some shall depart from the faith. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So at the end times, which we're in now, people are gonna in the, in that, that are gonna come in the name of God are gonna be giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. That's why when you go into church today, you see a lot of whoredom in there today that right. you did not used to see 50, 60 years ago. Right. You see some crazy stuff in the church now because it's the end times. So people are giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines are coming out of the devil, meaning of the deceiver, meaning they are not of God, right? Read. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, uh -huh. having their conscience seared with an hot iron. Read. Forbidding to marry. So some religions, like uh, Catholicism, right, they have what's called nuns, right? And some of the uh, higher, higher priesters and priests, popes, popes, it says you can't marry. When the Bible says, it, it says be fruitful and multiply. The Bible says it's good to marry. The Bible, it says marriage is honorable. They say, oh, in order for you to be holy, you have to abstain from marriage. That's an option in the Bible if you want to. But the, uh, the Catholic Church makes that a law. You can't get married if you're going to be a nun. Then that's why there's, there's filth and fornication among those groups. Because they're sneaking off doing things. Right? When they could have just got married and done that lawfully. But read on. And commanding to abstain from meats. Uh-huh. So abstaining from meats, they do that in Catholicism. Uh, on Lent, they do that. You can only eat fish on certain days. You can only do this. That's doctrines of devils is made up things. My bro, you paying attention? We about to get to your point. Read on. Which God has created to be received with thanksgiving. So we're saying, saying God created meats to be received with thanksgiving. Read on. Of them which believe and know the truth. So of them which believe and know the truth. Remember that part because I'm going to come back to that. Read. Verse 4. For every creature of God is good. So this is where we fall off the horse. It says every creature of God is good. And your pastor goes, you can eat everything. What's that one preacher? Shrimp, crab, hog, mog, dog, potato. You see what's saying? All that. Read. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. And don't refuse nothing. You can eat everything. Human meat if you want to. All the pastor saying it's crazy stuff. Read. If it be received with thanksgiving. If it be received with thanksgiving. So my, my man, I'm on your point right now. I'm on your point right now. Come on, bro. You got to give me some time now. You want me to deal with it? Oh, it's business. This God, though. All right. I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. I hope you listen. So, all right. Read. Read it again. If it be received. If it be received. And God have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So, sis, uh, in the church, do they teach that you can eat everything you want to? Yeah, they teach me not under the laws of Moses no more. They say, mm. well, they don't say it, but they basically say it. Like, they don't say it, but that's they what they teach it. Yeah, they they teach it. that we're not under the laws of Moses no more because it's scriptures like that. And they say, you don't have to do the dietary law anymore. You don't have to keep the sack. We're going to get all the laws they be talking about. But now we're dealing with dietary. Now, he said, he said, if, he said, read it one more time because I lost my point. Verse 4, for every creature of God is good. And nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Uh -huh. For it 
is sanctified by the word of God. Now that's the point they skip over. Now when he says these creatures, he's talking about every creature. He says, if it's sanctified by the word of God. Right. So it's not talking about every animal on the face of the earth. It's talking about the animals that you can eat that are sanctified by the word of God. Right. Give me Leviticus 11 and verse 1. Then I want you to jump to 42. The book of Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron. Oh, Moses, right? The laws of Moses. Watch what he said. Saying unto them, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are upon the earth. So, this law, this chapter is giving us laws of the beasts we can eat. Jump to 42. Verse 46. Mm -hmm. This is the law of the beasts and of the fowl. And of every living creature that moveth in the waters, uh -huh. and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth. So he's giving. He's like, out of this is the law on the on the animals that live in the ocean, the lakes, the land that fly in the air, all of that. This is the law over all those animals. Read to make a difference. To make a what? To make a difference uh -huh. between the unclean and the clean. The things you can and cannot eat. Right. Read and between the beasts. That may be eaten, and the beast that may not be eaten. Read. That's it. Yeah, all praise, all praise. These are the things that the Most High sanctified in His Word. My brother, my brother. These are the things that the Most High sanctified in His Word. He said these can be eaten, these cannot be eaten. Right. So when you read Timothy, right, he's talking about doctrines of devils. People saying you can't eat certain meats, and he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. What you what you mean? Chicken, fish is unlawful. God's word said it's sanctified. Yeah, all there it goes. Read that. This is insane. Yeah. Verse forty four. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy. For I am holy. So this law was in place so we could sanctify ourselves. So guess what? Sanctify meaning clean, cleansed, washed. Meaning these animals you can't eat, right. they're going to keep you sanctified. Right. But if you eat anything else, you will be defiled. So that's when, now when we go to Timothy, we're going to jump back to Timothy. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4 and verse 5. Yeah. For it is sanctified by the word of God. Now we got to understand it, right? Those animals that, that you can eat are sanctified by the word of God. So if it's not in Leviticus chapter 11 or Deuteronomy 14 saying you can eat it, then you can't eat it. So guess what you still can't eat? You still can't eat uh, shrimp, crab, and lobster. You still can't eat pork to this day. Now we can go over that. Give me, get, let's get a couple examples. Verse 7. The book of Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. This is some of the laws my sister just attested to it that the Christian church says you don't have to do anymore. But God just said you do. Read. And the swine, though he divided the hoof. Swine is pig. The pig divides the hoof. And be cloven footed. And it's cloven footed. Got that little little thing in the back, right? So look, the pig meets two of the criteria. But watch this. Yet he cheweth not the cud. Yet his digestive system is not in a form and fashion that God approves of for eating. Read. He is unclean to you. So what is he? Unclean to you. So if you eat swine and the swine is unclean, what does that make you, sis? Unclean So you no longer sanctify, right? So so how how we get to Timothy? And, it's, and, and now all of a sudden we eat pork. Right. It don't make sense, right? So the Christian church is full of lies. Jump down to the fish in the sea. Watch this. Verse 10. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is on the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. So guess what? If, if you got, how you doing, my brother? If you got an animal that lives in the water, so you got fish and all types of other animals that live in the water, if they don't have fins and scales, they're unclean to you. So shrimp, crab, and lobster, do they, do they have scales? No. So you can't eat them. You know, name something else you can't eat. Uh, any, like, the fowls of the earth, uh, of the air, like, um... I just know pork and oh, no, certain seafood. Okay. Pork and seafood. It's, it's a whole list of here. That we can go over. We can go over. Okay. It's a whole list of here. But anything in the ocean. This, he made it real simple. The entire ocean, if it doesn't have fins and scales, you can't eat it. It has to have both. So if it got one and not the other, it's unclean. If it don't have either, it's unclean. Right. So then that, that narrows it down. Now you just got to look for two things to eat it. 
straight out the water. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's the same thing with the uh, the beast that walk on the land. It's the same thing with the fowls of the air. And on the fowls of the air, he just goes down a whole list of what you can't eat. You know what I'm saying? Anything outside that list, you can't eat. So you can't eat pork? No. What? Bro, I just went over that. You, you are listening? I'm listening, but it doesn't explain. All right, I'm going to hit it again. I'm going to hit it again. Let's go back to 1 Timothy. You was on the phone. I get. I give you one. You was. I'm gonna give you a mulligan. You was on the phone. All right. But pay attention this time, man. Read the book. Again. The book of First Timothy, chapter four and verse four. Read it. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Uh oh. Did you catch that big word? That two letter word that mean a big whole lot of things. It said if it be received with thanksgiving. Read. For it is sanctified. For it is, because it also has to be sanctified. Sanctified by the word of God. So you can pray over it, that's fine. But it also has to be a food that was sanctified by the word of God. All right, so now let's get go back to Leviticus 11 and let's do 44 again. Uh -huh. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 44. Uh -huh. For I am My the man. Lord your God. My man, you paying attention? This is you right here. I'm, I'm getting you right here. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. He says, so you need to sanctify yourselves and be holy, for I am holy. This is in the same chapter as the dietary law. Jump down to 46. Verse 46. This is the law of the beast, and of the fowl, and of every living creature that moveth in the waters, and every creature that creepeth upon the earth, uh -huh. to make a difference between the unclean and the clean. For the things that are, sancti that are sanctified for you to eat, and the things that are not sanctified for you to eat. You right. get it? So, Timothy, I mean, Paul writing a letter to Timothy, he's saying, you can eat any meat as long as it's sanctified by God. Right. Meaning, as long as God already said this meat is okay. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now watch what happens if you if you want to do your own thing. This is New Testament 2, 1 Corinthians 3.16. Right. Watch no. what happens if you want to do your own thing and you say, you know what? I, I'm going to pray over it. I'm good. Your prayers go to God. If God didn't approve the food and you praying over it, he's not going to say, yeah, it's okay. Right. He already said you can't do that. Read. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3 and verse 16. Bring it out. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. We all heard this before, right? We are the temple of God, right? Read. And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Uh-huh. If any man defile the temple of God. Whoa. What's the way you can defile your temple? That's one way. Yeah. Go ahead. We get into that. That's one way. But we, what? how about in the context of what we're talking about? What's the way you can defile your temple? Eating the filed food. That's not sanctified. That's right. If the right. food's defiled, you would eat it, you're defiled. Right. You know what I'm saying? You got pork in your stomach when Christ comes back, it's a wrap. You, know, you get what I'm saying? I know it's cheap. It's the number one thing on the menu. So you, can't be you can be forgiven for it if you stop. Right. If you stop. You can't pray over, uh, you can't eat it, then ask for forgiveness, then go eat it tomorrow, then ask, it don't work like that. You're playing with the most high. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord!